With all the recent news around Squadron 42 being feature complete and some incredible technical showcases within the Star Engine at this year's CitizenCon, Star Citizen is beginning to draw in a lot more curious players. If you're one of those players thinking about diving into the game for the first time, the first obstacle you'll need to overcome, aside from navigating their website, is picking a starter ship. This is a decision that ultimately shapes your entire beginning experience, not just during this alpha period, but when we ultimately see a full release. It'll be you, your starter, and a vast universe of choices and careers ahead of you that having the answer to that question will make a monumental difference. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're talking starter ships and breaking down which is the best choice for you. Before we begin, I think it's important we get a couple key things out of the way and level set. We here at Legacy Gaming are not paid by CIG, not sponsored by any sort of company in any way, and Livid genuinely enjoys following this project's development. Our philosophy for any game is to never point you to purchasing anything besides the base game package that's required to just play the game. Contrary to what a majority think they know about Star Citizen, you can purchase every single ship that is currently flyable directly in-game with the currency you earn from completing missions and activities. Additionally, there are free fly events such as the one that happens around the big Intergalactic Aerospace Expo event each November, allowing you to hop in completely free, use any ship in the game, and give you an accurate picture of where development is currently at. If you enjoy what you test at this point, then maybe, just maybe, you buy the game. That's it. Whatever you decide to do, understand anything you purchase beyond the lowest level game package is entirely your decision and simply goes to support the game's development. It's not required to enjoy this game at all. Now, before we jump into the ships themselves, there are a few key components of each ship you need to understand. Power plants are where your ship can draw all essential power for, including engines, shields, weapons, and other utilities. Coolers keep your quantum drive from overheating and reduce the cooldown period after using it. Shield generators protect the ship from external elements such as weapon fire, tractor beams, and more. Missile racks are the part of the ship that holds missiles, which you can fire off. Gimbals allow items attached to them to swivel instead of being locked forward in a single position. Hard points are specific anchor points on your ship where you can slot certain ship parts, weapons, or equipment. And SCU's standard cargo units are the universal measurement that defines the dimension of cargo boxes. Now, why does size matter on all of these? The larger the ship, the stronger the component. All ships, depending on their size, have a maximum component size that they can equip and use. The higher the number, the bigger and more powerful a component is. With that out of the way, I'm going to break down starter ships into three price tiers. Base level game packages under $50, more premium starters under $100, and those that sit above the $100 mark and to me, don't really constitute a starter even though the website says they are. When creating an account, make sure to use someone's referral code. Ours is listed on screen and in the description below, as it is only possible to do so when first creating your account. This will simply net you some extra starting currency. We have a handy guide that's already on the channel to help you get started. I'll always recommend every single player to start in the first tier, regardless of your desire for most of the other ships we'll talk about in this list. Let's take a quick pause because I'm going to take you through the diverse range of starter ships Star Citizen has to offer, beginning with our two packages under $50. The Aurora MR from Robert Space Industries is the classic ship that has been around since Star Citizen's original Kickstarter campaign. It has a game package cost of $45 with a ship value of $30. And depending on who you are, you may find this little ship charming or ugly, a product of design language that has vastly changed since the game's inception. Despite the Aurora having an overwhelming amount of struts, hampering your cockpit visibility and a rather claustrophobic interior space, the components, armaments, and features the Aurora MR provide will allow any new player to be at least minimally viable in nearly all the gameplay loops Star Citizen has to offer. Equipped with one small power plant, two small coolers, and two small shield generators, the Aurora MR has a truly average offering of basic components. Having two coolers and two shield generators, as you'll come to find out, enables the Aurora to participate in combat-oriented content and still lets it take a decent amount of hits. In order to return fire, the Aurora comes stocked with a size 2 missile rack, stocked with two size 1 missiles and two size 1 gimbaled weapons. 
For those who don't know, a gimbaled weapon means that instead of being locked in a fixed forward facing position, requiring your whole ship to be pointed at or leading your target, it allows your weapons to shift their position and track targets more easily, essentially trading more potent firepower for ease of use. The Aurora MR also features two additional size 1 hardpoints, allowing for a max loadout of four size 1 weapons. This gives the player a bit of room early on for increasing their damage output and allowing for a more custom armament of weapon types. In terms of quantum fuel capacity, the fuel needed to jump between locations in Star Citizen 583 is about the lowest you'll find in a starter ship, a common theme around most others on the list. However, the surprising thing about the Aurora MR is the fact that it's actually one of the fastest starter ships in Zero-G, clocking in at a max speed of 1,210 meters per second. This unfortunately doesn't translate well in atmosphere where it performs much worse, almost like a flying brick with spoilers. Its cockpit view also leaves a lot to be desired. The range of visibility is great, but most of that gets severely obstructed by the copious amounts of struts something CIG is very clearly addressing in future ships from this manufacturer. Hopefully, the Aurora will receive a pass itself. In terms of notable features, you'll have access to an external 3SCU underslug cargo rack for use in cargo running. The real benefit of this starter is the walkable interior space instead of just having a cockpit. The reason this is a huge deal is it allows you to not only place boxes and other items manually in your ship for delivery missions, but it also allows you to access the ship's local inventory quickly and safely. This means you can store gear, consumables, and even mining harvestables safely, increasing the time you can spend out in the verse before needing to check back in with a station or landing zone. This interior space even comes stocked with a bed, a feature that allows players to log off within their ship and wake up directly in your ship the next time you log in. This bed can even come in handy in allowing you to bring another player along with you safely and securely. This can enable you to respond to rescue beacons for up to one player, which can be a lucrative way of making money, saving fellow citizens stranded out in the verse. With all this in mind, we still fully recommend the Aurora MR for anyone looking to get into the game with a bare minimum pledge package. The Mustang Alpha from Consolidated Outland is the other base $45 game package, with a ship value once again at $30. For those whose only goal is combat-related missions, this would be your ideal base level pick, as it's much more maneuverable, especially in atmosphere, than the Aurora, while stripping out some cool features like the walkable cabin and bed. This does limit your overall versatility, namely in the passenger and rescue mission space, but by no means do I consider it a deal breaker. Equipped with one small power plant, two small coolers, and two small shield generators, the Mustang Alpha has the exact same component offerings as the Aurora MR. Weapon-wise, however, its offensive capabilities are a bit higher. While the Mustang Alpha doesn't come with any missiles, it does boast a nose-mounted turret with two size 2 weapons. Like the Aurora MR, it also features two additional upgradable size 1 hardpoints, allowing for a max loadout of two size 1 weapons and two size 2 weapons. This gives it a noticeable combat edge over the Aurora in both firepower and maneuverability. Throw in the fact that the Mustang's cockpit has unparalleled visibility compared to pretty much any other ship in the game, it may make sense why this ship has grown on players keen to race, low fly, or engage in combat from the very start. Now, if you're looking to do cargo, since it is technically classified as a light freighter, it also has a slightly bigger underslung cargo rack that can hold up to four SCUs. This is also readily accessible to the player. Not only can you use the tractor beam to manually load cargo boxes into the space, but you can also crouch inside the container, giving you the ability to access your ship's local inventory. For the longest time, this wasn't the case and was a major reason most could not recommend the ship to new players. Thankfully, that's no longer the case. The Aurora MR has long dominated the space as the most picked starter class due to years of recommendations, mostly in part to the Mustang's numerous initial shortcomings and broken features. Over time, however, that gap has gotten closer, and with maybe one more pass from CIG, the Mustang can finally compete with the Aurora.
The Pisces from Anvil Aerospace marks our progression into the second tier of starter ships, coming in with a package price of $60 and an overall ship value of $45. Now, I'll be honest here, while I love the boxy support craft vibe this ship gives off as a starter, I strongly recommend you pick any other ship on this list before this one. The Anvil Pisces is meant to be a support craft to a larger vessel able to carry it, originally being paired with the much larger Anvil Carrick. For its size, it boasts an incredible amount of internal space, even going so far as to include two additional jump seats for friends or other passengers to hitch a ride with you. It doesn't have a bed or any sort of aesthetic internal offerings, but it does offer you an impressive amount of space on both sides of the ship to hold boxes, packages, really anything you find. Additionally, because you have so much space to move around in the ship, accessing your ship's internal inventory is an absolute breeze. For these purposes, the Pisces really is a nimble and effective ship. When you get into the more technical aspects of the ship, however, especially when any sort of combat threat is involved, the glaring issues you'd have when picking this as your starter quickly become apparent. First of all, the Pisces has two small coolers, a small power plant, and probably the worst thing about it, a single small shield generator. This makes the Pisces really no better than a paper airplane, as even a short amount of sustained fire on the ship will result in your demise. It's ironic considering the Pisces comes with four gimbaled size one weapons and two size one missiles, putting it on par with an upgraded Aurora. It has a decent armament, but it's clearly meant for quick attacks or last ditch efforts to defend yourself, meaning running is often your best course of action with this ship. If you're strictly looking for a starter ship oriented around cargo and looting with no intentions to survive most combat encounters, this may be a better pick for you than the Aurora, but by the numbers, the Pisces falls at the bottom of our list. The next starter ship from Drake Interplanetary, the Cutter, makes sense when placed side by side with the Pisces. Coming in with a package price also at $60 and a ship value of $45, it's directly competing. And even though it has some similar issues as the Pisces, I have to say the Cutter is one of Livid's top picks. We've also seen this ship package on sale quite often around big events, and when priced closer to $45, it's really a no brainer. Here's the headline The Drake Cutter is the perfect ship for players who seek to enjoy everything aside from ship-to-ship -ship combat. Whether you are running cargo, looting sites after FPS skirmishes, or even exploring abandoned wrecks on distant planets, the Cutter serves as a fantastic home base when starting out. While it may look like a starship hastily pulled from a scrapyard, a cornerstone of the Drake overall design language, internally it has everything you could really ask for in a modern Star Citizen starter. The cargo grid tucked away on the rear port side allows you to securely carry four SAUs worth of cargo, but if you're willing to climb over boxes or other items to get to your cockpit, you can fit more than double that if you're willing to keep things loose. It also has the added benefit of being able to carry ground vehicles no larger than the Grey Cat SDV or Hover Quad in case you are keen on doing more ground-based activities. Your ship's components are also easily accessible throughout the ship, and while you do only have a single size one shield generator, cooler, and power plant like the Pisces, this makes your ship much easier to fix in a pinch, especially with engineering gameplay coming online in the future requiring you to maintain your components. Weapon-wise, you're only looking at two size one gimbaled weapons and two size two missile racks. With no way to upgrade these further, the cutter is no better than a stock Aurora in this department and even falls behind the Pisces. Luckily, it performs better in atmosphere than the Aurora, comes with VTOL capability, perfect for those tricky landings or gravity that is particularly dense, and has shockingly good acceleration thanks to those large engines. We also can't forget to mention the full bed, lavatory, and even weapon racks inside, allowing you to stay rested and keep weapons readily available. The cockpit may not have the best visibility vertically, but it certainly gets the job done horizontally. Like I said at the beginning, if you can get past the aesthetic, the features of this ship, especially at a sale price, will allow you to tackle most modern offerings Star Citizen can throw at you.
Coming in with a slight price increase of $65 for its starter package is the 100i by Origin Jumpworks, and I'm willing to bet this will be another appealing option to those leaning more into luxury aesthetics. The easiest way to describe the 100i is it's the classier version of the Aurora MR, but improved in almost every aspect. Let's start with the components. Featuring a single size one power plant, two size one coolers, and a single size one shield generator. While that once again does put us in dangerous territory when taking damage, it has a much easier time engaging targets thanks to stellar maneuverability. A size three missile rack and two size three hardpoints coming stock with two size two gimbaled weapons. This brings its overall damage potential beyond that of both the Aurora and Mustang, making it a rather capable dogfighter, especially with such an impressive and unobstructed cockpit view. The 100i also features a much sleeker profile compared to any other ship in this list, meaning a harder to hit cross section in combat and less likely to lose a vital part of your ship should you sustain damage. Its acceleration is actually quite good as well, and when in atmosphere, it features a unique air intake system that allows for the production of hydrogen fuel passively. This leads it to be one of the most fuel efficient starters on the list. Now, if we move inside to the interior, the Origin 100i is actually quite spacious and features an internal cabin with a bed, just like the Aurora, but without the claustrophobia. There's also a storage bay accessible in the rear of the cabin, capable of holding up to two SCUs of cargo. Regardless of wherever you are inside the 100i, you'll also be able to easily access your ship's internal storage, remaining quite safe and maneuverable while doing so. The Origin 100i really is a fantastic little starter ship, with the looks alone likely to be enough for the handful of potential players out there. Stepping up again in price, we reached the Aegis Avenger Titan for $75, and out of every single ship you'll hear me talk about today, the Titan knocks it out of the park in nearly every single aspect. If you look at everything each starter on this list can do, the Titan just does it better, making it not only Livid's, but many in the Star Citizen community's recommended premium starter ship. In regard to components, we're looking at one size one power plant, two size one coolers, and two size one shield generators, meaning it can sustain more damage than most other starter ships. That is, of course, if you can hit it. With a middle of the pack max speed of 1,115 meters per second in space, the plane-like design allows it to remain highly maneuverable and agile in atmosphere. Where the Titan really begins to show off its capabilities is in its armaments, boasting a size four fixed nose mount weapon and two size three wing mounts stocked with gimbaled size two weapons, the Titan outdamages everything else on this list. That doesn't even account for its two size three missile racks that come stocked with four size two missiles. If there was a starter ship you'd want to pick to have a fighting chance against most other ships off the rip, it'd be the Aegis Avenger Titan. The upsides don't stop there, however. Not only does this ship feature an internal cabin area with a bed and food storage area, but you'll also have access to a cargo bay capable of holding up to six SCUs of cargo or even a small vehicle like a hover quad, dragonfly, or gray cat buggy. Even when this cargo bay is full, the rear ramp isn't your only entrance as you're fully capable of exiting or entering the ship securely via the cockpit. Not only do you once again have great visibility here, but this adds an extra layer of security in case anyone is lurking around trying to shipjack you. Like many other ships on this list, once CIG gets around to giving the Aurora, Mustang, and Titan itself another once over for its gold standard pass, it will likely remain king of the starter options. Now this next ship is a last minute addition to the starter ship lineup and one we honestly didn't expect. The Sulen from Gadak Manufacturer comes into the list with a game package price of $85 on sale during the 2953 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo for a discounted $72. This agile and elegant light freighter also marks the first time a starter ship comes from one of the Star Citizen's alien races in this case, House Gadak, perfectly suited for both humans and Xion pilots. Livid spent a ton of time with this ship on launch day and really came to the conclusion that you're either going to love the ship or hate it. The main reason being this is the very first ship in Star Citizen to take off and land vertically. 
The legs that hold the landing gear transform when taking off to become the main thrusters of the ship, so while you'll fly horizontal as usual, when it comes to landing, your brain is going to need to rewire itself to get used to the inverted feeling of the controls. From a technical standpoint, this ship is absolutely stacked. We've got one size one power plant, one size one cooler, and two size one shield generators. So it's capable of sustaining damage just like the Aurora or the Titan. Then we take a look at the weapons. Three fixed size three weapons that can be brought down to size twos and gimbaled. It also has three bespoke missile racks totaling 12 size two missiles. Off the assembly line for a freighter, it has really solid firepower and is more than capable of defending itself. It performs really well in both space and atmosphere thanks to a whopping 24 maneuvering thrusters, but we did notice that the strafing thrusters seem to be its weak point when it comes to combat. It even boasts the highest quantum fuel reserves of any starter ship at a whopping 2,900. This gives players much more flexibility, especially in the much larger upcoming pyro system. Cargo-wise, you have access to six total SCUs with everything being transported externally, two SCUs on each side. This makes for very easy loading and unloading of cargo, but also opens you up to having your cargo easily stolen should your ship get disabled. Also, because of the non-traditional cargo bay, there isn't a single vehicle that can be transported by the Sulen, which could be a deal breaker for a lot of people at that price point. Thankfully, the Sulen makes up for its shortcomings in its overall appearance. Not only does the entryway feature Xi'an Gravlev tech in the form of stairs, but inside you have access to three separate floors separated by a speedy Gravlev elevator. On the ground floor, you'll have access to most of your component housings as well as an incredible looking weapon rack capable of holding two primary weapons, two sidearms, and two utility items, all nicely color-coded to make our lives a bit more organized. The second floor is your hab, where you'll find a dining nook, an extremely comfortable bed, and a lavatory with what is probably the most complicated toilet seat animation in a video game to date. Finally, the third floor, or the cathedral, is your flight deck. You'll have a few more components here that you can access, but overall, this space is primarily reserved for the pilot seat. Sitting down in it will see your character lifted and rotated up into the cockpit, one that gives you fantastic visibility all around. Overall, despite the $85 price tag, the Sulen provides good value, especially when it's on sale. I fully expect this ship to sell a ton this year, not only because of its alien nature, but because it accomplishes nearly everything a starter ship should. Last but certainly not least is the Nomad by Consolidated Outland, the space pickup truck slash RV of Star Citizen. This one sits at a really weird price point, clocking in at a hefty $95 for a starter package and is honestly the biggest issue I think plaguing this ship from being a more used starter. The reason for this being, as we'll talk about in a bit, is for a little bit more money, you'll actually be able to get your hands on something like the Freelancer or Cutlass Black 2 ships that have better capabilities and wider uses in almost every regard, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Aesthetically, you'll either love or hate this ship, but don't let its size fool you. It's actually one of the fastest ships on this list when in space, clocking in at 1,171 meters per second in space and capable of accelerating quickly as well to get out of any hairy situation. This of course does come with some downsides as your size gives a much larger profile for enemies to land their shots on you, especially with maneuverability in space and atmosphere, leaving much to be desired. Thankfully, the ship can take a beating compared to every other ship on this list, boasting three size one shield generators, two size one coolers, and one size one power plant. You're also able to defend yourself surprisingly well here with three size three hard points, coming stock with gimbaled size two weapons and two size four bespoke missile racks, housing eight size two missiles, just like the Titan. Now, even though I wouldn't call its combat performance poor, what it does lack in that department is made up entirely in the utility aspect, which is ultimately why you'd want this ship in the first place. For starters, the external cargo bay not only holds a whopping 24 SCUs of cargo, four times that of the Avenger Titan, but the external cargo bay can also be lowered to the ground, enabling you to transport ground vehicles as large as the Tumbrel Cyclone or even the Grey Cat Rock, opening up the more advanced ground mining gameplay loop to you immediately. I just wish the cargo bay had a door that directly accessed the interior of the ship, as dealing with everything outside can leave you rather exposed to getting jumped by enemy players. 
Now, speaking of the interior, we have to mention you not only have an internal cabin with a bed, but a full kitchen, lavatory, and even a suit storage locker for when gear has a direct impact on your flight capabilities, giving you a quick place to store it. Overall, the Nomad provides value where it matters, but we do believe the price should come down around $10. It's truly the only thing holding it back from being a more prominent starter ship, because why spend almost $100 for this when vastly better ships are available for $25 more? Even still, the Nomad is the perfect vessel for exploring more advanced gameplay loops or getting that feeling of parking your ship somewhere remote and enjoying the peace and quiet with your space truck. Before we wrap this up, many of you may be noticing a few ships missing from the starter ship list, since the game package area on the website clearly defines more expensive ones and even some within the second pricing tier. Let's quickly touch on though, even though they are better examined via individual ship reviews. Let's start with one that has been absent from the starter packages for quite a long time, the MISC Reliant Core or the B-Wing and the Light Freighter of Star Citizen, currently clocking in as a $65 standalone ship. It's honestly an incredibly cool ship that features co-piloting functionality, six SCUs of storage, and really solid armaments. The MISC design language has undergone a lot of changes since this one was released, so I fully suspect it will be getting a lot of love during its gold standard pass, maybe even putting back in the starter ship game packages, so keep your eyes peeled. Next up, let's talk about the Anvil Arrow listed on the website under a $90 game package. Simply put, this is a light fighter, one of the best in the game to do that, to be exact. But it can quite literally only do that. For us to consider a ship as a true starter, it needs to allow players to experience a broad range of gameplay loops, and the arrow literally prevents you from engaging in all of these besides combat. It has no cargo capabilities, no livable interior, and can't even remain out that long due to these small fuel tanks. This is a fantastic dogfighter, just understand that's all you'll be doing in this ship. Last up, I mentioned the MISC Freelancer and the Drake Cutlass Black. These are not starter ships in our opinion, not because they don't allow you to engage in nearly every single gameplay loop, but because they are in the tier three, vastly more expensive category and really set them apart from every other starter ship with a price tag of $125 each. These really represent perfect future upgrades for your starters, something you can do via CCU chaining, which we detail in another video entirely, or by earning enough in-game currency to purchase these within the game. They are the perfect multi-crew ships for two to three players, can hold a ton of cargo by early game standards, can fit most small ground vehicles in the game, and provide better defensive and offensive capabilities than all other starters. What I'm saying is that these ships are best experienced with friends, especially with engineering gameplay right around the corner, making soloing most ships beyond starters a thing of the past. So whether you're new to the game or considering checking out Star Citizen for the first time, we hope this video has helped arm you with the knowledge to dive in with confidence. As I said before, Livid loves Star Citizen and has been following the game's development since the beginning. So if you have any questions, drop us a line in the comments and he'll do his best to respond back with an answer. Of course, you can also join us on Discord if you wanna hang out with the team, talk about Star Citizen and other great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free giveaways going on all the time. That link as always is below. My name is Cody Atkin from everyone here at Legacy Gaming. Thanks for watching and play on.